So you're a beginner rider. It's 2022, you finally decided you're gonna get a motorcycle and you're making a smart boy move and you're getting yourself a Yamaha R3. You've done all your research, you've looked at all the videos and you've determined that this is a fantastic beginner rider option and you're probably right. However, if you find yourself at the Yamaha dealership, you're probably gonna meet some salesman who's gonna tell you, hey, if you've got enough cash for a Yamaha R3, you should really be looking at a Yamaha R7. It's got a bigger engine, it's a bit bigger, beefier of a motorcycle, and hey, you can grow into it a little bit and it'll hold its resale value a little bit better. But is it a good idea to start on an R7 versus an R3? Well, today we're gonna try to find out. All right, folks, today is gonna to be a fun video. We're gonna to try to determine which of these two motorcycles is gonna be best for you as a beginner. Now, this Yamaha R3, where'd we get its bike? We got it from a Discord boy, as we've gotten a lot of our bikes lately. We've been Shaking able to- that tree a lot lately. Yeah, we've been able to hit up multiple Discord boys lately, and they have come to our aid, given us a lot of different bikes, and this one is no different. Yeah, so that's a 2019 R3? This is a 2021 R3 right 21. here. Got the new bodywork on it. Looks mm -hmm. just like the one we did as a giveaway bike back in 2019, which was a while back. And speaking of giveaway bikes, this R7 over here is one of our giveaway bikes right now. Click the link down below, dmnew.co, become a member, sign up, and get entered to win this motorcycle. Now, for these motorcycles, I think there's three things you gotta think about when you're a beginner rider. Obviously, you gotta look at power. That's a very big consideration when it comes to motorcycles power comes in a lot of flavors and varieties and the way they make the power, which we're gonna talk about. Second, we're gonna talk about ergonomics. The ergonomics of both these bikes are actually pretty different. We're gonna show you guys. And then third, we're gonna be talking price and what makes sense for you as a rider. So let's get started. When it comes to ergonomics on the R7, it is a very committed motorcycle. You're gonna find this motorcycle to be pretty compact, very similar to something like an R6, although a little bit less. It's got low clip-ons, high pegs, and a pretty high seat height at 32 inches. Myself, I'm 5'11 with a 32 inch inseam, and I can fit on this motorcycle pretty well, but I'm used to super sports styled motorcycles. Now the R3 is way more neutral and appropriate with the 30.7 inch seat height. It's gonna fit most riders pretty well, and it's gonna be something you can learn and ride with for a very long time. Now at six foot four and 240 pounds, the R3 is a much more comfortable motorcycle for somebody my size, which is funny when you think about it being the smaller motorcycle. It's very open because it's a upright riding stance. When you crumple yourself up onto the R7, it feels a lot more tight. It feels a lot smaller. So if you're a bigger rider, you might actually be more comfortable on the R3 than the R7. If you're sitting at home, try putting your laptop down on the floor and looking up at your desk while you're typing. It feels a little bit odd. Sitting on the R3 is very natural. Let's take a look at some of the specs on the Yamaha R3. This is a motorcycle powered by a 321cc parallel twin engine that's two cylinders, and it's gonna produce 42 horsepower and 22 foot-pounds of torque. That is right within line of what we would consider a perfect beginner bike. It's not gonna scare anybody, and in, over in Europe, it's an A2 compliant motorcycle as well. This thing's gonna weigh about 375 pounds, which is gonna make it really lightweight and easy to maneuver when you're a beginner rider. It's also gonna cost about $5,299 brand new on the showroom floor, but you can usually find these for as cheap as 3,500 bucks on Craigslist. Now what happens if you double the displacement and double the price too? So over here we have the Yamaha R7. This motorcycle, like Yam said, double the displacement a little over 689cc parallel twin what makes this one different though, aside from size, is it is a 270 degree crank, which you don't need to worry about what that means. All you need to know is that it sounds much better than the standard parallel twin offerings that you find in normal beginner bikes. This motorcycle is making 74 horsepower and 50 foot pounds of torque while weighing in at 420 pounds. This is the bleeding edge of what you could consider a beginner bike. Something that could scare you if you're not knowing what you're doing. It's easy to have this motorcycle overwhelm you, especially with how it makes its power. This bike also costs you $9,000 before tax, title, and fees, so you're looking at a five-figure motorcycle once all said and done. 
But the specs are only part of the story. Let's get these bikes out on the road and see how they handle. Before we test these two bikes out, I need to take a second and shout out our sponsor for today's video, Cardo. They're the best in the business when it comes to helmet comm systems for your ride. No longer do you need to sit in contemplative silence, pondering your existence in a vast and empty universe. Fill the silence with the sound of music or podcasts or ASMR or whatever the kids are listening to these days. That or chat with buddies while you ride. No matter what you're looking for, Cardo has a system to match your needs and budget so click that link down below and check out everything they have to offer now let's see how these bikes stack up out on the road all right folks we are here riding the yamaha r3 and the yamaha r7 trying to figure out which one is best for you as a beginner rider and i got to admit spite i'm on this r3 here and I can't think of a better starting point than this motorcycle. As many people know, I started on a Yamaha R3, and it's hard to debate whether or not this is a good beginner bike, but do you think that someone could do the R7 over the R3? What? I can't hear you over this exhaust. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think the R3 is the quintessential beginner bike for a reason. You know, it's so just easy to get along with. And while the R7 is a ton of fun, it's more fun as a sport bike than I normally get out of it because it's the right amount of power and it makes torque in a weird way for a sport bike. Um, it just kind of tickles me in all the right spots, but I could really see this being a problem for a beginner. Um, there's a lot going on with this motorcycle, whereas the R3, you get on it, and it does the motorcycle thing and nothing else. Yeah, I think for me, you know, one of the big things that beginner riders will come across is the old herky-jerky throttle, right? And I'm here in fourth gear just slamming this throttle open and closed, and the R3's like, okay, like, I don't love that, but I'll forgive you, you know? Whereas the R7 just, man, that's not gonna be a fun time if you do that on that bike. <laughs> yeah, let's we'll see if I can get into a straight here. I'll do the same thing. Uh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, it's not having fun. <laughs> it's like everything on the R3 has been built with a beginner in mind, whereas the R7 kind of fits in this weird spot where, sure, if you really wanted to, you could get one as a beginner bike and kind of grow into it a little bit and learn with it, but um, you won't have to deal or worry about any of that with the R3. It's set up so well for a beginner rider, but is there anything the R7 does for a beginner rider that you think would be better? Ooh, man, you know, I think the R7 actually presents things that a beginner rider doesn't need to worry about. Stuff like uh, suspension adjustment on that is something that's normally outside the remit of your average beginner rider. It's not something that you need to worry about as the first thing you do to your bike. Um, I think that the, you know, urge to modify this motorcycle is tempered slightly by the fact that you have to get a full system which normally necessitates having having to get a tune yeah. so because it's a more expensive more upmarket more i'm not going to call it premium but for lack of a better word premium motorcycle you need to be putting more expensive parts into it so if you're at all interested in modifying your bike like most riders are the R3 is really approachable in that sense. I mean, that bike there has all the classic beginner bike mods on it. Yeah, this little bike's already got a little Acra slip-on, and it's already got a little tail tidy, uh, TST integrated lights, and uh, little turn indicators and stuff, which is going to be great for you know whoever buys it after this guy who's owned it, because they're going to be bagging in all those mods for cheaps. <laughs> so. Yeah. But like, you know, you try to get yourself an SC project like this or a, even a more uh, affordable slip-on, or uh, there aren't slip-on, a more affordable full system, you're still looking at five, six, seven hundred dollars in the pipe alone, and then you gotta get a tune. Yeah, you're, you're talking close to a thousand dollars. Yeah, there, there you're just putting a two hundred dollar slip-on on. Yeah, it's not the loudest thing in the world, but it gets you some better tone and uh, that's all you want as a beginner, right? I mean, what more do you get? And yeah, the dash on this thing feels a little bit more, like a little bit more racy. Yeah, I mean, that's really splitting hairs. They look so similar, you know? 
Now one thing I like about this R3 though is how much the engine kind of zings up. I can just slam it go all the way to 12 and a half thousand RPM. That's a lot of fun, you know? Yeah, I mean the party stops on this at around 10 grand. So, uh, and I mean really because it's a naked bike engine, it stops a lot sooner. You know, yeah, you can rev it out all the way if you want, but in my opinion, torque is more fun out of this engine than the top end. So you're keeping it low down in the rev range. You're probably shifting at like six or seven grand on this. Yeah, easily. Whereas this bike, it's, you're cruising at six or seven grand, you know? Mm -hmm. What I find kind of funny is that, you know, Yamaha went from the MT-07 to the R7, and you can see the compromises they had to make for a naked bike into a sport bike. But they also did the same with this, but in the opposite direction. Yamaha made the R3 first, with this zingy little parallel twin and then made the MT-03 where that doesn't really feel like an MT bike much in the way that that doesn't really feel like an R bike with the engine. Yeah, it's it's weird that kind of dichotomy. They went backwards. Yeah. But I would say for the aspiring rider who wants to get into sport bikes, um, you know, like I said, I started on an R3. I think it's a great place to start if you're looking at sport bikes and you're interested in that because this, despite the ergonomics being a bit not very racy at all, the engine and the character and the flavor of this bike is definitely sport bike. Um, I don't think anyone would jump on this and be like, oh, this is being something it doesn't want to be. It's just a little baby sport bike that's designed for babies, <laughs> for entry level riders, right? <laughs> Man, just kick them while they're down, why don't you? Now, every, look, man, everyone needs a comfortable and good place to start, you know? For some people, that's the 650 class. For some people, that's an R3. And then you have the ego-driven people that buy a Craigslist leader bike and yeet themselves into the sun, right, as their first bike. So everybody's got to start somewhere, you know? Some people start off for a week and end up in the hospital, which is a damn shame. But if you're a smart rider, you'll get something like this R3. And, uh have like a 99% success rate, I would say. Like, it's pretty pretty hard to mess up with this bike, you know? Whereas that thing, the margin is way smaller. You really need to goof up on the R3 to, to have a bad, a properly bad time. On the, on the R7, man, this thing, this thing can get away from you, even if you've got a couple of years under your belt. Oh yeah. You know, it's, it's plenty powerful. Um, I wouldn't necessarily go out and say it's like a finisher bike, but any more power, any more premium stuff in here, and yeah, maybe we are talking finisher bike stuff. You know, it's it's right on that line where you could you could really buy and keep this bike and want to have it for a long, long time. But I still would find myself wanting something a little bit more chill. Because sometimes this bike, it doesn't have any chill. Yeah. One thing I really want to see is, uh, you know, performance differential in a straight line. I think a lot of people are going to get the R3 and worry that it's going to be like a little moped and it's gonna, not going to be able to keep up with their buddies and stuff. And if your buddies are just doing a bunch of highway pulls, you're right, it's not going to keep up, no chance. But if you're riding like a normal human being on fun twisty roads and in all their normal roads, uh, I think the R3 can keep up plenty quick. Um, I think these two bikes are more comparable in a twisty than a lot of people would like to admit given their skill sets. Oh yeah, I think for, uh, I think that if you buy this and you have a friend who's more experienced rolling around on an R3, he's gonna humble you because he's gonna be right there with you or leave you behind. Yeah. All right, you ready? about five bike lengths you got on me yeah I mean it's it's double the engine what, yeah what do you want right <laughs> it's literally more than double yeah it would be weird if you didn't win but I think uh, I think a lot of people would be surprised at how the R3 does particularly if you are my size and that's something we should talk about is for a lot of beginner riders they don't want to jump on the R3 because they're maybe sized more like you, Spike, right? They're maybe taller and bigger, but you said you fit on this R3 a little bit better, so I'd love to get you on this bike 
and then we can discuss what it would be like for a bigger rider to jump on this bike. Sure, sounds good, let's do it. Immediately, you can feel the difference in the ergonomics. This is so much more friendly and so much more chill. Yeah, this is, this is just a sport bike, you know? Like, yeah, it's not an R6, and R6 is a little bit worse, but it's pretty close, honestly. Mm -hmm. and I, I really feel like I can just sit straight upright on this motorcycle and just cruise with it. Uh, in terms of power to my weight, I think that this is, it's a little bit tough, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Um, because you need to zing this engine all the way up, it has a limited amount of torque. You really need to keep this engine on the boil. And it's, at a certain point, you don't want to do that because mechanical sympathy takes over. Yeah. You know, uh, it doesn't, it, sometimes it doesn't feel good to just bring the neck of a motorcycle, even if it's built to do it. I think that's uh, I think that's why the uh, Ninja 400 has done so well because it does split the difference a little bit. And I remember you loved riding that bike. We had it as a giveaway. Yeah, the Ninja 400 was great. Uh, I think the only knock against this versus Ninja 400, I mean, it feels so similar back to back. Uh, these beginner bikes do because they're all nice and upright and comfortable. The only difference is displacement. Yeah, Ninja 400 just has uh, 80 more cubes or so, and it just feels a little bit snappier, a little bit more fun, but the ergonomics are still there. It's still quite friendly. Yeah, the more time I spend at the R7, the more I'm like, I don't really think this is a beginner bike, honestly. Yeah, it's got, uh, it's got a lot more grunt than, than, I, than I really remember the FZ07 having. I mean, to give you guys an idea, if you haven't seen my video where I compared my Daytona and this R7 on track, I was able to do a 214 at Eagles Canyon with this R7, and I used to do a 214 on my Daytona. So this is definitely not a slouch. This is a pretty serious little motorcycle, um, despite the kind of you know parallel twin, forgiving nature that people think it might have. Um, I don't know, man. This thing's pretty vicious when it wants to be. Yeah, and you can really feel that when you've got the suspension set on that motorcycle. I mean, I'm just cruising over these bumps here, uh, and I don't feel the motorcycle getting all out of sorts. But if I was cruising over those bumps on the R7, I think I'd be feeling it a lot more. Cause it's a much stiffer suspension. Yeah, and I have it dialed in for my weight and for the track, because unfortunately, I was on track with this thing this past weekend doing that video, so <laughs> the suspension setting was probably pretty rough for you. I mean... I think that there aren't any features really on the R7 that you need as a beginner that this doesn't offer you, you know? I, I really don't. I, I think that, yeah, some of this, it might be nicer to have a little bit more power to grow into if you're an older beginner rider, maybe, maybe, but I feel like the fully adjustable suspension, the slipper clutch, that sort of stuff, you're not you're not gonna know what it's doing. Yeah, definitely not. You don't have a frame of reference to understand it. I don't know, I also think there's something to be said about you know, there's this this whole idea of like, oh you grow into your beginner bike and then that's why you need to have a little bit more power and blah blah blah. But at the same time, like it's nice to be able to really master the fundamentals and not be worried about what the bike is gonna do underneath you, you know? Yeah, that's really what these little bikes will do, especially ones that have these super basic ergonomic packages, the super comfortable ones that are, it's literally just like sitting on a chair with this thing. Yeah. You don't have to worry about, okay, how does my input feel while I'm leaned over? Am I putting too much, you know, the input feels heavy because I have too much weight on my wrists kind of thing. Yeah. I have to keep my core engaged all the time, otherwise, you know, it doesn't feel all that comfortable. Um, these standard style sport bikes, they'll give you everything you want and give you that nice, easy learning platform. I would do it from 30. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, Spide, I think we've 
ridden these quite a bit. Why don't we go and wrap up our thoughts on which one is best for what beginner? Sounds good to me. All right, folks, rounding the day out here with the Yamaha R3 and the R7, and we have some interesting conclusions. Spike, what would you give for your conclusions on the beginner rider looking at both of these motorcycles? Definitely the R3 is the right choice for the beginner rider. Uh, if you have no motorcycling experience, if you're younger, if you're a little bit older, if you're a bigger guy, I like the R3 for basically everybody. Um, the, it has a couple of downsides. It's a little bit buzzy. You gotta hold it wide open. It's kind um, of fun though, right? But yeah, it, as, <laughs> as somebody who's ridden a bunch of fast bikes, it's fun to sit here and just be wide open throttle. I mean, it's, it is enjoyable, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. How about you? I would agree. I think for virtually every person, the R3 is gonna be a better learning tool as you approach the world of motorcycling. I think there is a small, set of sub, uh, small subset of people who would benefit from the R7. Those people would be maybe someone who has ridden motorcycles in the past, mm -hmm. maybe dirt bikes as a kid or something like that. They know they wanna to go to the track. This is a very track oriented bike. They know they wanna get into that kind of lifestyle and the life around it. And uh, I would definitely put someone on this that's a little older, maybe 24, 25 years old. I think the 18 year old crowd Maybe not the best idea for this machine. <laughs> it's a very torquey motorcycle. Now I know some 18 year old at the 636 is about to comment on the channel, but whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. um, this motorcycle is also twice the money, guys. Like that's a big consideration when you consider that you're gonna buy this thing and probably flip it within a year. Um, this motorcycle, you could definitely keep for two years, but it's more fun to ride a bunch of different bikes than it is to just buy one bike and have it for like three years or something like that. Um, we think it's just a little too torquey, a little too snappy, a little too aggressive for the everyday beginner rider. This thing's gonna get you down the road. It's, it's a sure bet, you know? Get the R3, it's a sure bet you will have a good time motorcycling. One thing, going back to your point about riding multiple different motorcycles, getting something that is this expensive right out of the gate means that you can't you can't go out and try a bunch of different stuff. If you've, if you've invested a little bit of money into a used R3, you can flip it a little bit later, usually get about as much as you put in out of it to go get a different style of motorcycle. And who knows, maybe you start out on a sport bike because you think you like the look, but maybe you wanna try a cruiser, or maybe you wanna try an adventure bike, or a supermoto, or whatever. If you don't invest a ton of cash, you can pull it out of your bike pretty quickly, flip it, and go try something else. I'd like to make the case that if you have 10 grand floating around and you're thinking about getting an R7, why don't you spend five on the R3, ride it for six months, and then spend five on another motorcycle because the N plus one rule is very real, and it would be a ton of fun to have a baby sport bike like this, and then like Spite said, a dirt bike or an adventure bike or something else on the side, maybe something more powerful. It's always more fun having more motorcycles. Yeah, and I mean, I could see myself just having this sit in the garage and come back to it every couple of days just, just to have fun with it because yeah. it's just fun, yep. you know. So that's gonna wrap up our thoughts on beginner riders and these two motorcycles. What do you guys think? Leave us a comment down below. Be sure to like the video as well. It helps the algorithm uh, show our video to everybody in the world. How about that? Isn't that a nice thing? Remember, this is a giveaway motorcycle over here. Click the link down below to yamanube.co. Get yourself signed up to win it. And we'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Keep watching Yammy Noob. Keep watching Yammy Noob. Keep watching Yammy Noob. Keep watching Yammy Noob. Keep watching Yammy Noob.